Why, hello everyone. Long time no see. Um, hi, it's me. I'm back. I'm alive. I have just completed eight weeks working at a summer camp. Crazy stuff. I'm currently in my swimsuit in my tent. I haven't been able to have my phone this whole time, so I finally got it back and the vlogging commences. Um, it's really weird because this side of the tent is now all empty. There used to only be one bed there, but my tent mate moved out because all the American counsellors have gone home today. Um, and it's just international people really left who are going home tomorrow and people who are staying for another week for a different type of camp um and here's my little bed a little tent tour i used to have like a chest of drawers here and then there's my trunk down there and my suitcase there and my duffel there and it's really sad we're going today train, um, we got to Baltimore, we got on a shuttle to the airport, got to the airport, was just kind of confused about where we had to go or who we had to speak to. So we waited in a line full of people that had their flights cancelled for so 
long. Finally get to the front of the line, there was only one more flight that day and it was completely sold out. But anyway, we get to the front of the line and the woman is like, yeah, the next available flight is at 5 p.m. tomorrow. We were meant to fly at 8 p.m. today, nearly 24 hours later, to get a one hour flight. And it was gonna be a connecting flight to get somewhere that's only an hour away by plane. But we were like, fine, okay, whatever. And she said she would keep looking for us because flights get canceled, people drop out of their flights all the time. So just keep looking. And so we sat down and we were gonna wait for like the 15 minutes that she told us to. And then we hear over the speaker, passenger O'Connell. <laughs> and I was like, was that O'Connell? Was that O'Connor? Because Meg's last name is O'Connor. And they had got us on a flight that left at like, in like half an hour. And we were like, holy Lord, praise the Lord, what a wonderful day. So happy. We throw our bags on, my bag was just under the limit. Um, they put our tags on that say like to Chicago, but they also put a tag on that saying it's transferred because we were going to have to get a flight to DC, where we've just come from, to get on another flight with like a 15 minute changeover to get to Chicago. So we run through security and then we get to the other side, we're like, where is our flight on the departure boards? Like, could not see it anywhere. We're so confused. So I went to go speak to like a desk and I was like, um, where do we go? And she looked at the ticket and she just sighed and looked so sad and frustrated. Turns out, <laughs> this woman at the desk gave us tickets for a flight that had already left. <sighs> this flight had been diverted to DC when it was meant to be going somewhere else and she'd put us on this flight to go to DC, to go to Chicago, when it had already left. Meanwhile, our bags have been sent off to go to Chicago on a flight that doesn't exist. So our bags are just somewhere in the airport of Baltimore somewhere. Uh, because now we've given up our plane tickets for the next day at five o'clock because we've got, we thought we were getting new tickets for this new flight that we were just about to get on. So now we are left with no plane tickets nothing so the woman who looked so upset when she found out about this was like searching for again probably like 20 minutes until she finally found us flights for tomorrow we have to each get on a separate flight at two different times of the day they're both direct though which is nice but um and they're earlier than the five o'clock flight we were going to get on tomorrow but Still, we're not on the same flight, which kind of sucks. And we were told like, hey, go down to baggage services, they'll get you your bags back. We were like, chill, simple, easy. Little did we know. There is a very long queue full of lots of angry people. And we waited in this line for probably 40 minutes until I was like, enough is enough. There was like one guy for loads of people with miss missing bags from all different places around the US. And I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna use my initiative. This man looks like he's easily influenced. <laughs> so I walk up to him and I'm like, can I just ask you one quick question? Um, it wasn't a quick question. He proceeded to try to tell us that they were probably already on the way to Chicago and I was like, no sir, there's not been a single flight for Chicago since these bags were put on the belt. They are in this airport. He gets on the phone to his pal, makes us give a description of our bags. I'm trying to give a very thorough description on mine. Like, it's a black soft shell case. It says it in like rose gold lettering and has a rose gold handle. Then on the phone, he's just like, yeah, it's a black soft case. I was like, because <laughs> this whole time we've been in the queue, like this is time sensitive. Our bags could be going to Chicago without us. We just want them back. So we wait and we wait a bit more. And I was like, you know what? They're going to Chicago, these bags. We're going to Chicago. Just let's hope and pray they get to Chicago at some point. We're checking online to see flight options and we found out that the flight that is leaving tonight that was fully booked at 10 o'clock has three spaces. So we're like, okay. So I run back into the office this where there's a massive queue of people waiting outside and I'm just like, dude, phone your friend. Has he found the bags? If not, just leave it. Just let them get on a flight and we'll find them in Chicago somehow. Um, so he rings up his friend. His friend absolutely had not even started looking for them. We run upstairs to the check-in desk, 
see some girls who <laughs> were campers at camp there and speak to their grandma about the whole fiasco we've been through. We get to the front of the line and the woman's like, yeah, so there are spaces, but we've got like a waiting list. Bearing in mind, in the first place, when we went to go get more tickets for the Chicago flight, I asked, can we be put on a waiting list? And she was like, oh, there's kind of like no way to do it. You just have to wait around. So that was a lie. And I was like, okay, how many people are on the waiting list? And she's like, nine. I'm like, well then, we're not getting on this flight. And now we were sat in a hotel room in Baltimore, even though we're meant to be in Chicago. And all the a saga. So, tomorrow we're going to that airport, we're getting two different flights, we're gonna try go early, see if we can like get on the same flight somehow. That's what Allman recommended to us to do. And I am ringing up Southwest customer service and I am demanding compensation because it's not just that our flight was cancelled when there was no weather conditions that meant it had to be cancelled. That sucks, but that sucks for everyone who was on our flight. What sucks even more is getting put on another flight for the next day, losing our tickets for that flight, having to get on another flight that had already left, losing our bags as a result, and now having to go on two different flights tomorrow, and not knowing where our bags are in the whole of the United States. So that's why you shouldn't fly with Southwest. The end. <laughs> so my morning has just been spent ringing up a lot of customer service people and not really getting any answers. So we're sticking to our original plan. We're going to the airport. We're getting two separate flights. Everything's sold out for the today. And we're just gonna hope that our bags are in Chicago. Ah! <laughs> we're back on the shuttle that we were on at like 11 o'clock last night. Let's see how it goes this time. <laughs> So, we tried to get Meg on the standby list for my flight, but apparently people with exclusive membership bumped her down the list, so from being the first standby she went to the fourth or more, so she didn't get on my flight, which sucked, but it's okay. Um, so I went on my flight and then I came straight to baggage claim, to the like baggage, what is it called, baggage services, and praise the Lord our bags were here. I've been here for like three or four hours in this chair just waiting. We should have gotten here like this time yesterday but that's okay. It is what it is. No! And we're just kind of taking a nice walk around and seeing what's here because it's just so pretty. Oh boy.
imagine we get off the lift in the Country Music Hall of Fame Museum and the first thing we see it's a Taylor Swift Education Centre. I found my new home. <laughs> recording studio yeah. we're about to record two different Taylor Swift songs this is hilarious we're prepared to be blown away <laughs> they're only gonna hear us singing though they're not gonna hear the backing track oh my god that's true Did <laughs> 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 so I had enough cause like we hadn't seen each other in a month when you said you needed space what <laughs> getting back together we oh it's a bit high never ever ever <laughs> getting back together A shock turn of events. Um, we made it to the airport on a bus without a hitch. I know. Compared to the last flight we caught, oh my Jesus. We stormed through security, caught that bus with relative ease, nearly crushed the bus driver with my case, but you know what, that's okay because we're here. Um, to New York. Nashville, I've loved you. You've had the best music. It's been so good and I can't wait to come back again. Um, but for now, on to New York. Just after it was built, so to show them that it was strong, 
P.T. Barnum from The Greatest Showman, not a real great guy in real life, but P.T. Barnum marched 12 elephants across this bridge to show people it was strong. Visibility is half, but I'm being positive, it's gonna be super fun. <laughs>